All right, we are live. Hey, we're live. How's it going, live everybody? Again. Welcome in. Live again. Hello, all. Brantley, I'm loving your sign back there. That is sweet. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's really a, cool. It's a LED logo. It's cool because it looks neon, like old-fashioned yeah. neon. That's cool. Can Which is really neat bright. that they've made neon look or led look like neon right so you get right. the low power consumption and less chance of it breaking on you right but still that classic look you know yeah i love it i think it's they did they did a great job on it it really ties the room together yeah <laughs> <laughs> something like that. i love that rug man it really tied you. the room together yeah and Club Mike V says, finally starting to feel like spring here. Yeah, it is here too because the uh, allergies are just kicking my butt. It's so bad. I don't know what it is about this time of year and spring down in Texas. It's just, it's, it's brutal. Brantley's like, I'm going to Arizona. I'm like, that sounds great because there's no yep. pollen there. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> All right. Well, how's everybody doing tonight? I want to certainly welcome you. We're probably going to get a lot of new people in tonight. We've had a a pretty remarkable day on getting uh, subscribers in. So we, we certainly do appreciate all the new folks here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we do this every single Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. Just kind of a laid back chat. Sometimes we have a topic, sometimes we don't. But irregardless of that, if you have any questions for us, gambling related or whatever, travel related, uh, start asking it now. We will kind of star them along the way. And then uh, towards Towards the middle or end, we'll start to jump through some questions here um, or whenever they're relevant to what we're talking about. So hope you guys enjoy it. We're going to have a fun night tonight, as always. And uh, let's uh, have a good show, guys. And uh, let's see. Um, oh, we have a trip report. Dave, how was Slots of Fun? Oh, my God. It was Look so at her fun. butt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I actually broke away. Um, everyone sort of like, you know, was leaving on Tuesday. So Monday night at midnight, I head over to Slots of Fun. And it is as dead as it always is, which really worked out great for recording. But <laughs> right. as I'm recording, and I'm not going to give away everything, but the selection was awesome. The games were cool. But people were coming in just to play the quarters, like purposely just for the quarters. And I forgot how much how many quarters fit into a bucket of just $20. Mm. That's a lot of quarters and you're having to feed in one at a time. So you're slowing down so much, like all that stuff. I just forgot about so much. It's just like right, right. how slow it was. And just the, and what happens when you put an extra quarter in, it just falls to the bottom and goes clank. <laughs> but it, also it is kind of cool. Cause you kind of get a hybrid machine. It's kind of like the late coin slots where you could still put money in. It's got a, you know, a Tito cash bill acceptor. Um, and it will show you the credits. You can play those or you can cash out. Dunch, dip, dumps is the bottom. It was a blast. I can't wait to get that video out. I hopefully have it out Friday or early next week. I'm awesome. excited to see it. It, it, it was fun. To go over there. And they brought back their $2 hot dogs or $2 beers. Uh, it's just, and the place is pretty much looks the same. A lot of empty space. Like they could bring in so many more machines. I think, I really do think they do. They did move over all the circus circus machines, two slots of fun. So they're all in one house now. Uh, all the coin ones, you mean? Like yeah, um, all the coin ones. Okay. Yeah, I and bet really, they have a bunch in storage that they'll just keep bringing out. That'd be real nice. That would be um, awesome. You can definitely tell, and I don't want to give too much away, that they worked on these machines. These did not come from a warehouse, dusted off. And put them in. They did work on them to bring them back. So which I really appreciate any of them. Yeah, uh, Janet brings up a good point here. Uh, that I always said the reason they took away the uh, feed with mm -hmm. coins is to speed your play and they make more money. Boy, that is certainly true. And now you can you fast. Out, so you can really plow through money. <laughs> you know, it doesn't take any time at all. So, um, yeah, that's part of it. The other part was just it, it's it's a Labor. slot attendant slot tech nightmare. Yeah. I mean, it really yeah. is. Um, now, I didn't have one issue other than the hopper got empty on me one time yeah but no yeah. issue otherwise so maybe they did a little bit extra work on them so and not one slot tech i saw was coming by either so they had oh, the attendance good. but they didn't have like the tech like i saw last time at circus circus so i can't wait to go back and also if any of the new people are here make sure you hit that subscribe button you know oh yeah 
We always forget to say that. Yep. Don't forget YouTube to is constantly subscribe. reminding me. Make sure you ask everybody to subscribe and like and thumbs up and click the bell. I always yeah. feel like, you know, people have watched YouTube long enough that I think they get that. But I don't know, for whatever reason, you say it and people do it. I, yep. it's There's something to it. I feel like you really shouldn't have to ask at this point. But, hey, there's something to it, right? So there you go. But, yeah, I'm super jealous of you people. being out there. Um, let me ask you this, because I always wanted to do this. I know it's kind of, you know, it's circus circus. It's not exactly like the cleanest place and all this. But I kind of want to go there to do all the carnival games, too, and the roller coaster area and all that stuff. Is it worth mm -hmm. it, or is it just really bad? Define worth it. Like, <laughs> Well, I mean, we, there, we don't really have a carnival place here to, to do that kind of stuff. I mean, that stuff is like really famous up in the Northeast with like the boardwalks yeah. and stuff like that. But we don't really have any of that down here. Um, you know, so I'm just curious if it's if it's really a crap yes. over there or not. It is. It's, okay. It is absolutely a crap hole, but it's worth playing all those games. Okay. Um, you know, it's all those little carnival games. They're all around the Midway. And so that's kind of fun to play. However... I realize it's Circus Circus. I realize it's built around family. When I was there, I saw at least four people who had made very poor life choices. Um, uh, lots of substance abuse choices were, were there. Um, oh. Things were done for money in their past, I'm sure. So just take that into account is that different people are coming in and out and it is not on the populated end of the strip. It is on the lesser populated of the strip. So Makes sense. Makes sense. a little more evident. Security is a little more busier than the slot attendants. So, I guess that's good in a place like that, right? <laughs> it is good. Yes. All right. And uh, before we get to some questions, uh, Brantley, how's things going over at Cowboy Slots? Everything's going great. Everything awesome. is going fantastic. Came out with uh, a really good video uh, episode yesterday about uh, talking about five of the newest, best slot machines and. I think one of the biggest things that we're seeing, um, and I mentioned this in the video yesterday, um, and kind of talking to a lot of developers, it's kind of, we're seeing this new trend, which I like, where even games that are really high in volatility, the developers are trying to make it feel less volatile. So they're mm -hmm. they're trying to implement new features and stuff to make the, make the ride feel smoother, so to speak, give people a little more kickbacks more often. And we're seeing that in a lot of new games. So uh, I did that episode yesterday about some of the games that have those features in it. And um, they're a whole lot of fun. They, they really are. I've played all of them and uh, have had a great time at them every single time. Awesome. I definitely approved nice. a number three, which you'll have to go see to <laughs> yeah. know what that one is. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's a good list for sure. And uh, I do totally agree with that. I think um, with the not to give away any of them. Well, I am going to give away one. But Frankenstein, I think, is a good example of one mm -hmm. that it probably still is kind of high on the volatility, but it doesn't feel that way. Like it gives you enough action where it's just not a bunch of dry spins um, and a lot of bonus teases and stuff like that. But, yeah, you know, I think that's cool. I mean, if they're able to do that, then you know, that's great, but still keep, keep an eye on your budget with those games just because you're, oh, yeah. you're going to be distracted. I think the one game, uh, Dave, if you remember, we played cash NATO, that was yes. the one game that they did everything possible to get you not to look at how much credits you had. I mean, it was in the oh, bottom yeah. left corner. It was very small. You've got all this, like a tornado going and the sounds and everything. It was very easy to lose track of how much money. And I, I feel like a lot of that's partly designed, you know, to get you to try to forget about what your credit balance is. So just be very careful with those. Uh, yeah, still got to be careful with them. About every other spin was a win, win. You know, <laughs> it was a loss, but, you know, disguised as a win. Right, right. And, like, they did a great job on that because I think at one point I won three cents. And, yeah. you think, and it makes the same bells and whistles as if you win your bet back. So it's like, okay, great idea right. there. Yep, yep. All right, let's get to some questions here. We got a bunch in here. Um, let's see. Burgett says, since there is an RNG, a random number generator on class three, excuse me, does it matter to wait then continue playing on the same slot or to move to a different slot? Thanks. Makes no difference whatsoever. Um, it's down to the microsecond that you push that button that your uh, fate is sealed, so to speak, uh, on the slot machine spin. So, um, just because the game is not playing well doesn't mean that by waiting or changing your timing up or something will somehow trick the machine into going into a winning cycle or anything like that. Um, 
that's definitely not something that is a strategy or anything to look for because that's just not how they work. But the strategy that you should use is if, number one, if you're not having fun, if you're playing a game and you can't seem to get a bonus or a line hit or something, probably a good opportunity to stop anyway and to go do something else. You can come back to the same machine later. It's still going to be there. Um, it's not in any kind of cycle that you need to wait for. But whenever you're in a losing session like that, I think it's really important to just cut your losses and take a break and come back later. Um, because just so you can kind of reset yourself, I think that's probably the most important thing that you should look for when playing any game, class three or not. I, I mean, this applies to bingo, class two, VLTs, HHR, basically any kind of gambling. If you're just not having fun and you're running into a bad cycle, you should just take a break, reset, and come back a little bit later. So that would be our advice for sure. Well said. And let's see. And uh, Dave, you want to take this one? Uh, yeah, they did take him out. I did not get a chance to go there myself, but I did beat someone else who had been there. And yes, they did take them out. Do not know when they're coming back. But, but they are coming back for sure. They are coming back. There's just no yeah. date, no idea of when. The, the floor staff doesn't know. So if the floor yeah. staff doesn't know, that means it's not anytime soon. So maybe a month or two, a couple months, who knows? Hopefully by our next trip, they're back because I do like those machines a lot. Yeah. Did they take the ones out of the plaza? Because I think the plaza had a few too. I think they're I probably still there. Yeah. I don't know. I, as far as I'm aware, this is just a four queens issue. It's not with anyone yeah. else. So I read an article um, today actually about like the reasoning behind it. And I guess this is something they do every now and then because they refresh the coins. Um, oh, like they change the, the designs yeah. and everything of them. So uh, that's what the article was saying. So this is actually kind of on schedule for something that they do every now and then. So I think they'll have a new coin design. I think that's what everybody's saying right now. So that'd be kind of cool, you know? Yeah. Go there and get I'd some more collectors. Another one. Coins. All right. Let's see. I'm going to give this one to Brantley because it is featured on his episode. So Brantley, take it away. All right. Mark, Dave, and Brantley, do you, uh, do you think a budget of $100 uh, that you could build up on Mo Mummy. So here's here's the thing about Mo Mummy. It is a really, really fun game. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the line hits are pretty good on it, but it is definitely not a bankroll building game. It is not. I, I think if you go in with $100 to play it, you've got to have that entertainment mindset. Um, play it for the enjoyment. You know, play it at a lower level. Um, you know, don't let your bet exceed a dollar. Um Play it for the fun and the enjoyment of the game. If you happen to build up, great. But I really wouldn't recommend it for building up a bankroll or building up a budget. It's just not the game for that. It's it's really more of an entertainment game. Uh, it is very entertaining. It does a good job at that, but uh, not for building up a budget. I really wouldn't recommend that game for building up a budget on, as much as I like it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, some games are just not built that way. That's right, for sure. All right. And uh, Sharona H says, so question again on high limit room. I see some videos showing there are machines that have 25 cent bets. So what makes them high limit status? Uh, every casino is different with how they label yeah. this. The, the, the lower tiered casinos like your Circus Circus or Excalibur and stuff like that, they'll have a lot of dollar um, and maybe even some quarter machines in there. But also you got to remember some quarter machines have hundred dollar bets attached to them. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, I mean, just because the base denomination is a quarter doesn't mean that it's it's a low bet necessarily, but it really depends on the casino. Like if you go to Bellagio or um, Bellagio you know, like Aria, 10 bucks thing, you're not going to find any quarters in there. I mean, it's not right. going to be there, but it really depends on the casino. Um, stay out of that room. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of dangerous stuff. A lot of dangerous can, stuff can happen in that room. Well, if you're going to do it, I don't stay out of it, but I mean, I hope by listening to us that you understand that there is a time to be in there and there's a time not to be in there. And you need to make sure that you choose wisely before going in there. A lot of people just go for broke and just shoot right to that, right to that room when they get there. Not a good idea. Play low, scratch that itch, get in that mode of gambling and see how the night progresses. If it progresses well, then go to the high limit room. If it doesn't progress well, stay the hell out of there. <laughs> I mean, but don't yeah don't be afraid to just look in the high limit room either you don't yeah. have to play in there you can just go in and look yeah. and just check it out uh i did what that in bellagio a few times i was just watching this one lady uh 
I kept walking by and she was playing $250 a spin on some Dragon Link game. And I'm like, pass. <laughs> <laughs> That's like an entire budget for an hour or two hours. <laughs> well, she kept winning $2,500. And I'm just like, how much Ten does it take you to, to get, earn $2,500? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And new member, Manuela. Right. We want to do also hey, thank all the you. new members we've had uh, this last week. We certainly do appreciate it. Absolutely. And I uh, hope you're able to uh, join us in our Discord chat. We have a lot of fun in there. And we will definitely have an after show party in there. We seem to stay up pretty late talking after yeah. our live shows in there. So, all right. Let's see. Uh, Dave, why don't you take this one? All right. Why do I always get the smallest free play amount, no matter how much money I run through the machines? Deborah, you're, I mean, this is a common problem. Absolutely. So it could be a number of different things. Are you going too much? So that could be a thing. If you're going so often, you know, like let's say once a week and, you know, maybe you're bringing like maybe 50 bucks or a hundred bucks, it may feel like a lot of money to you, but to the casino, they say, oh, well, you're just going to keep coming back. So I recommend staying away for about a month and seeing if those offers change. Don't try to bet more to get more free play because really all you're doing is throwing money to get some money back. And it's yeah. never going to be what you're getting back. You're never going to get what you actually lost back. So try that. Try staying away for a month or so, especially if it's your local casino. Uh, something else is go to the player's desk and ask. Like say, hey, why are my offers so low? Is there a reason? Can you look that up? And they can actually look up and have a lot access to a lot of information. It's difficult to get to, so do it when it's not like busy. You know, they don't have a lot of people waiting in line. But if you don't see anybody waiting in line, ask questions. Ask what your player rating is. You know, you can ask what your Theo is right there because otherwise you wouldn't have that information nor have access to it. But it's a lot of factors. Try just staying away for a while. Well said. Well said. All right. Uh, let's see. I'll give oh, this one questions. to Brantley. We'll just do round robin here. All right. So when using free play, if you select the max amount while playing, do you have to remain on the same game or can you switch games uh, and the balance carries over to a new slot? So you can, if you're just using free play um, and you decide that you're done with that session, you can just pull your card out and whatever balance that you didn't use will just stay on your card and you can take that to a new machine. That's pretty much how most of the, most free play systems work, whether it's the Konami system or IGT system, that's usually how it works. So you can move to another machine if you're not feeling it um, and your free play can transfer over with you when you move to that other machine. Oh yeah, and to add to that, that's how most systems work, yes. Uh, yeah. But WinStar is totally different. Um, it's one of those where it gives you the value. Uh, so if you have $50 in free play, it gives it to you immediately on the machine as a credit, but you have to play through that before you can cash out. And so in yeah, that so. instance, it will only cash out what you've earned off of that free play. But the rest, if you pull your card out, it'll transfer to another area on the card. It's really confusing. Correct. But uh, I guess the, the short answer is you're not going to lose your free play. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, you're no, not going to lose it. If you don't, if you don't use it, you're, yeah, if you don't use it, you're not going to not going to lose it by moving to another machine. Yeah. Don't feel forced. You don't to lose, lose, lose it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. All right. Good question. Let's see. And Buzznet slot says, "Hey guys, just assigned a local casino host. Should I tip him uh, when I run into him?" Oh man, this is a big debate. I don't. No. I don't. I, just, I feel like they're they're already getting a lot of money off of your play. It's that's the tip. <laughs> hosts are hosts are not a tipped position. Right. Yeah, they are right. not a tipped position. Now, I have heard of people giving them gifts, like, you know, a card or, hey, I thought you were going to say something. a car. I'm like, dang, no, not a car. I want to be a casino host. <laughs> I'll be a casino host. do car each week. Um, <laughs> if you have, like, something from your home area, you know, you want to bring them, like, hey, these jams are really good or something like that. These kind of things they probably appreciate just fine. Uh, more personal as well than just saying, here's money. But how much do you give someone who is making money on your losses. So that's that's a tough thing because they're not yeah. going to give you any money back when you lose. So <laughs> yeah. right. right. Yeah, where's your tip for losing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like where's my tip for paying you? That's right. It's yeah, exactly. Keeping you employed. <laughs> All right. Uh Dave, why don't you take this one? Monica, 
It makes me laugh when you guys say the low volatility games are boring because there's nothing more boring to me than pressing a button over and over again and winning nothing, aka high volatility. Monica, you're exactly right. Yeah. Uh, we say boring because it doesn't have all the flair that the new games do. I mean, every time you push the button, it may make the little musical sounds as the reels go, but there's nothing else going on. There's no little animation that pops up or anything else. So in that aspect, they are boring. But I like them a lot because there's not everything going on. There's just so much going on on some of these games. It's I played Luxury Line again. This year, uh, this trip. Oh, why did you? I do realized. That? <laughs> I don't know why. It was just, <laughs> it just kind of grabbed me. Like, I'm going to play that. Yeah. And over and over again, the same thing kept happening. You'd get those dollar offers and then nothing. You'd get, yeah. I got the red train, which is the grand train. It popped up and I had to wait until it goes to the last reel and nothing. So that kind of stuff is just like, okay, this is frustrating more than anything. Yeah. So I stopped playing pretty quickly and went back to top dollar. That game is infuriating. It yeah. is. It's like the grand train. At least give me <laughs> the 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 luxury line to have the chance at it. That's right. right. That's right. Or something. <laughs> like, I think we, I something. played that. We had a, I guess it was when we were in Park MGM, and I just had a really good run over there when we were playing uh, Frankenstein. And we walk past it. And of course, this guy says, Oh, look, luxury line. So I'm like, I've never played this game. He's like, Well, let's play it. I think that's how it went anyway. And so I sat down, three hundred dollars gone, nothing. Like it's I didn't get one bonus the whole time. <laughs> I was just like, forget it. Yeah, that's a tough game. Real tough game. It is. I'm just not a fan of those. Let's see. And uh shout out to SD guys in here. Keep up hey, the excellent SD. content, boys. Hey, appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks so much for uh, popping in here. All right. Question time. Let's, uh, Brantley, you can take this one. We're doing round robin here. All right. So Brantley or uh, Gamble Smart, will you do a video showing cabinet styles with numbers, dimensions, et cetera? Brantley, you're live with uh, slot uh, with slot guy. Great. But some of us need help. So a video showing cabinet styles with numbers and dimensions. Pro I'm probably not going to be doing that. Um, yeah, there's no sure reason to. either. <laughs> there, yeah, there, there's really, yeah. there's really not a reason to, I mean, there's, there's really not much education in that and it's, it's really kind of useless information unless somebody's buying a slot machine for their house and you would need to know the dimensions of it. Um, but like different cabinet styles and stuff, I, I think it, it ro really boils down to, you know, and I'm not like, I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but it really boils down to, I just don't think people are interested in that. Yeah. Well, maybe you could just suggest it to Chris if you do a next your next yeah. live. I think if we do, like, like, yeah, if we do a live, um, if we yeah. do a, um, when we do lives about uh, purchasing slot machines for the home, um, I think that that would be an appropriate place to yeah. do it. I think we could definitely do right. uh, do that. But the other problem too, I mean, cabinet styles with dimensions that's a lot. That's a lot of different cabinets. It's a lot of different styles. And then you got to talk about what kind of a stand are you putting it on? Is it going to be a big stand, a small stand? Are you going to set it on your floor? I mean, there's there's a bunch that goes into that. So I don't know. It's it's something we could possibly think about. I don't think it'll be a standalone episode, but maybe included into uh, included into an episode on purchasing slots for the home would probably be more appropriate for that. Roger that. Sounds good. Let's see. And shout out to Don P. Peterson is in here. Thanks for the video, guys. And hi from Leesburg, Florida. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining us. Really do appreciate it. And let's see. Kevin Deal says, do the slot snocker, sl snockers. 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 Slot snockers. <laughs> yeah. That's probably what they should be called. <laughs> slot slot snockers over at Leesburg's Palace. <laughs> I know. Uh, on the Ainsworth slots really come out uh, on them. Seems like they put a couple thousand and not get the jackpot. And if they do win, do they have to split the winnings? Yeah, to my understanding, um, because we actually talked to a gentleman that was in that club, or at least I think I did. Uh, no, Dave, you were there. We were talking to a guy that wanted to be in that club. I think he was a um, either somebody that was playing there or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, long story short, um, it is a big crew of people. I mean, you, you basically have to pay to be in it. And uh, they cycle through 
these facilities that have must hit by progressives and they play them when there is a plus EV chance on it. And basically what that means is that they know the number. They've done all the math to figure out that if it reaches a certain number, then it's a high probability that they will come out ahead by winning that progressive. And if you do that, and there's the reason Windstar is a perfect place for this is they have hundreds, I mean, hundreds of Ainsworth must hit by games in there. They're, they're every corner you turn, there's one. And they just hit those up every single day. We saw another one when we were there last time. They always had the AirPod in the ear and they're going through mm-hmm. and they're checking all of them and they have their little notepad or their iPhone or whatever and they're recording all the data. If you do that, they can come out ahead. Otherwise, they would never, they wouldn't stop doing it, you know? <laughs> so how much they are ahead, I have no idea. I really don't know. But Ainsworth is a terrible, I mean, Windstar is a terrible place for average people to play because all of those have been reset recently. They're all low. Um, because they're just they're there and they're just taking ownership of all of them, so it's kind of frustrating. But what can you do, right? All right, let's see. And Brian says your videos have been uh, extra hot lately. You should avoid the casino more often, Mark. <laughs> if you're going to produce more videos like recently, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> sometimes you don't hey, need the good tell. Although sometimes you do, you know. Right. Uh, you got to play the things that you talk about. But uh, no, this uh, last couple of videos have done really well. We certainly appreciate everybody that's watched and uh, shared it with your friends and all that. So it's it's been a good day, and we we're enjoying getting you guys educated. That's number one. And if you're all new right. here, make sure to hit that subscribe button right now. I know here's yeah. one from Amanda about the LVA book. I got my LVA book. Mm. Can't wait to redeem. I'm posting that link up right now, so you yeah, can go your own a, book. Didn't I have a link in here? No, I guess I didn't. So gsgs.live forward slash book. Pretty easy. I posted it in the read. chat so people have it. Okay. Oh, we got a super chat. Oh, we didn't even see that. Eric Coben's YouTube world. Ever tried table games? A oh, lot, yeah. Eric. I love Absolutely tables. a lot. Uh, you don't see it's a not lot a win of table games. <laughs> yeah, not a Windstar. Windstar bad. Uh, yeah. But you don't see a lot of table games being recorded generally because it is a little bit extra harder to do. Uh, yeah. There are some channels that do it, but they have to go through a lot of extra steps to record. Maybe one day. <laughs> yeah. It's, but thank it's you so very much tough to get permission to do that. Yeah. It's got to be like, like Dave said, I think on our last show, um, brought up some very good points. You're taking up multiple seats, so multiple positions for people to be in there. Plus, you're probably taking up the whole table because other people probably don't want to be there with a the camera pointing down and all that right. stuff. So it makes them nervous. So it's lost revenue for them with less seats. So you probably have to bet a certain amount to be even considered to, to film table games. It's just one of those things. So I'd love to do it. We certainly do play table games. Uh, we mentioned we don't play them at Winstar because you have to ante every single, every, every hand. single hand, every single roulette, you have to ante, which is essentially just giving them money to play. And that's a big no, no. That drops your RTP down pretty big over time. So not something that we typically do there. So, but when we go to Vegas, I always sit down at a blackjack table or a roulette table, you know, at least once, if not twice. All right. Roulette for me. Let's see. Here you go, Dave. Okay. Con- Proud Monkey confirmed they had more than just the generic machines of circus. Yes. So they had uh, the same number of generic machines they had before, which I think was about. Let's say 20 machines and their five dollar version of those machines. Uh, but yeah, they have I would say 20 to 25 quarters, maybe another 20 or so dollars, and then uh, about five or six five dollars that were not the generic ones. So it was a good selection. It I, it really was a good selection. I think that's what's got me most excited about it is that uh, they have the non generic versions. I had really no interest in playing those generic ones. Um, I like the double diamonds, the top dollars, the triple right. stars. Like those are the games that we play anyway. And to have those with coins, even better, right? So they were fun. Yeah. I'm going to do one more quick one here for Michelle. Go for it. Michelle, how did Dave do on race? He looks alive. I am alive. Uh, it was about 30 miles uh, total with roughly 75 obstacles, 80 obstacles. The elevation on each of the 10 mile runs was about 4,500 feet elevation gain. That was brutal. 
I was like one mountain after another. It was freezing cold on Saturday. We actually drove through a snowstorm in California on uh, Friday going there. But otherwise, I'm okay. Joints are a little sore. Muscles are a little sore. But alive, ready for the next one. (laughs) (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it was like 30 miles. You know, I'm sore. I broke my ankle. I hate it, but I'm ready for the next one. <laughs> I did not break my ankle this time. That was two years ago. <laughs> that was two years ago. <laughs> Still. You're one of those people that has like a horrific skydiving accident. And then you're like, you're you're in the hospital bed and you're like this and you're all crippled up and you finally wake up. And the first question you ask the doctor is, when can I get out and do it again? <laughs> when can I go parachuting again? <laughs> all right. <laughs> When it's in your blood, it's in your blood, right? That's All pretty right. much it. Uh, Brantley, why don't you take this one? Yeah, so what are your favorite low max bet? Two to $3 slots in Vegas outside of Cherry's Jubilee and Chicken Dinner. Well, chicken winner, winner, chicken dinner is gone. Yeah. Uh, from, it oh. is completely gone. It's been replaced Sad. by... Um, it's been replaced by one of those big, uh, big red sevens machines in a uh, Las Vegas Raiders theme. So winner, winner, chicken dinner is gone. Cherry's Jubilee is still there. Um Best two to three dollar slots in Vegas outside of Cherry's Jubilee. Uh, honestly, I, I know, um, like New York, New York has a couple like really old school, like double diamonds, stuff like that. Those are always really fun to play. Uh, Blazing Sevens, those are going to be really fun. Um, you know, max bet on those, you know, three bucks. So that's what I would really recommend. Um, you, you start going to a lot of the other bigger casinos, like, you know, start going to like Aria, stuff like that. Uh, the selections are very limited. So stick with places like New York, New York. Um, MGM Grand has a couple uh, that, you know, of course, they've got like Majestic Lions and stuff like that. Um, but your older casinos or um, Fremont Street is really going to be your best for games like that. But I would stick with something like the Double Diamonds. Um you know, if you get really lucky and you have, happen to find a dollar pinball, um, something like that, you could play uh, or dollar top dollar, of course, um, if it's if it's around. But yeah, definitely check out some of the older uh, older casinos there for those. Yeah, I think New York, New York still has uh, three dollar double top dollars there. So yeah. no pinball, sadly, they never have. <laughs> yeah, there's no only pinball. that one in the high limit room. So, um, yeah. And let's see. And Captain Newport says, I find some slots don't have rules available. I've never seen that. Um, the only time there's not like a menu or anything is if it's printed on the glass somewhere. But I think by design, they all have to have rules have somewhere. Um, but they call it different things. Like they'll call it game rules or call it pay table. They'll have a little question mark or you have to really kind of look for it because it's not really consistent from manufacturer to manufacturer on what they call it. But uh, there has to be something in there that explains how the game works, like what gives you what credit amount, things like that. I think I'm pretty sure that is required. I've never seen a slot that doesn't have something like that. It is. And let's see. Oh, here's one for me here. Go for it. Mason Riviera. What are the best casinos in Wyoming? I'm here. In- oh, wait, wait, no, that'd be Brantley. Brantley would be the resource <laughs> on that one. No, I'll say, are you well, <laughs> I read that and I was like, a Wyoming question. I got the guy here. <laughs> well, I mean, the good news is, is you know, Wyoming really, it, you, you have a choice of either A or B. You've got Wind River Casino or you've got Shoshone Rose and they're 30 minutes apart from each other. So um, those are really going to be the only two big casinos. Um, Shoshone Rose is going to be a lot smaller, but of course we have the Cowboy Slot Zone at the Shoshone Rose Casino and you can pick up a free Cowboy Slots poker chip. And usually I'm there uh, at least once a month checking in on things. A bunch of new games coming into the Shoshone Rose. Wind River is a lot bigger. Um, But really, if you make a trip up, they're relatively close to each other. So Wind River is in Riverton. Shoshone Rose is in Lander. They're about 25, 30 minutes apart from each other. So if you go to one, you can go to them both. And uh, Shoshone Rose is going to be opening up their table game section probably next month. So if you're a table games player, Shoshone Rose is getting their table games back. Is the but not many awesome. choices. You've only you've you've got a choice between A or B. <laughs> That's it. Let's see. Is the pass open? Is the snow clear? It is today. It is today. <laughs> <It's> today. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Check the weather first, right? But it's kind of, it's coming up on summertime. It'll be nice up there. Yeah. Then. 
And uh, Jody's in here reminding everybody we hit 9,200 subs. Nice. Guys, we woke up this morning at 8,600. So thank you so much. That's uh, it's been awesome. an incredible day for the channel. Absolutely and, incredible. Uh, we want to welcome everybody to the crew here. We're having a great and time. And we do have something planned at 10, 10, 10K for everybody as well. So Wait, we do? What? We do. Yeah, Mark's going to do $10,000 spins. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on Huff and, more, okay. Huff and even if more every. Pie. Oh uh, yeah, nothing <laughs> more. But I always need one thousand dollars to send us a dollar, and then I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Ten one thousand dollars spins or a thousand ten dollars spins. Your choice, Mark. Neither. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes! We'll do something really cool for ten thousand. We don't know what it is yet. Yeah. We do have some good ideas though. Let's see. And I'm not going to mention what the uh, members mentioned in the chat today. Because we are not doing that. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, uh, John Lee says, for a bonus feature, does the slot know if you're changing the nomination amounts? For example, if a firecracker is about to pop, number one, firecracker is not about to pop. Okay, it looks like it is, but it's not about to pop. Uh, by changing the nomination amount higher, would it now take longer? So, if you notice on the firecracker game, and this is true on most of those types of games, if you move around on denominations, you're going to see the levels change because you're actually playing different games at that point. Um, so just because a firecracker looks like it's about to pop, it's it's totally an illusion, 100% an illusion. Um, we have some video we haven't posted yet, but uh, Dave was brave enough to play it a little bit longer when we it were was in last time. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. Spoiler alert. It was horrible. <laughs> but we, we actually put the camera on the firecracker, um, and you could see what was happening whenever, you know, the little rocket goes up and it hits it. It lit it back up, and then it turned it back off. And it's, it just went, and it's just, it's just an illusion. Like, it's, yeah. So they're never about to pop. Don't see that as an advantage play because you could get into some trouble with trying to chase that firecracker. Believe me, <laughs> they make it and really. That's what, easy the, to do. And that's what those graphics are there for. They're there yeah, to make yeah. you chase. You know, make you chase. Exactly. Absolutely, absolutely. You're like, I don't want to leave this for the next person. I want to get this. <laughs> so just be careful with that. But yeah, changing the denominations, you'll actually see, and you can do this. You know, try it without betting, and you'll see the the different levels change based on what the previous, you know state was um, but again it's just an illusion just i wouldn't even look up there I, there's nothing there that's going to help you with anything so all right uh dave why don't you take a couple I'll all right actually got, uh two foot questions from coyote concentrates here uh their follow-up question this was a follow-up uh hey guys i'm slowly moving from caesars to mgm i've been there done that uh i have an mgm off that says four nights comp 30 dollars free play 100 dollars resort credit can I book one night and get the resort blade free credit? Yes, you can. Uh, you can book just one night. It's up to four nights. So you can book one night and do that. Go to Caesars another night, use their offer. Um, so yeah, absolutely, you can do that. And then the other one is the follow-up question. What can I use the resort credits with MGA food or MGM food drinks? Yes, it is food, drinks, restaurants. You cannot use it on merchandise anymore. Uh, you can't use it on, it, it does say, you know, like food credit now when you actually do it. Uh, so it's no more merchandise, no more stores, no more bottles of water, or candy bars. You can use it in any restaurant, any bar. Um, as an example, like Italy out in front of parking. Be MGM. careful with the any because. Okay, true. Yes. Yeah. If yeah, they <laughs> pay rent, if they yeah, pay you, rent, you can't here's, use here's it. Our, and, yeah. Our recommendation yeah. is ask them before you place your order. Ask them. Like Johnny <laughs> Rockets. <laughs> Johnny Rockets inside almost yep. all the MGMs do not accept it because they pay yep. rent. Just ask them ahead of time if you can use it. Most of the time, if it is set further back, you can't use it. If it's on like right next to everything, that's the casino's property. Like any Starbucks, you can't use it on. Yep. Yep. Wow. Look at this. Uh, hey, lucky that's awesome. Wow. 10 Gamble Thank Smart you, memberships. So congratulations to everybody that got them. Uh, make sure you go to our channel and go to the community tab. That's where we post all of the member information, uh, which is a link to our Discord, as well as you get access to all the uh, private videos that we have uh, just for members, like just stuff of us goofing around and things like that, if that interests you. But thank you so much. That's very generous of you, and I hope you guys enjoy the uh, free membership, whoever ended up getting it. And if you're wondering, I've never won a free membership. Neither have I. I've never gotten a free membership anywhere. <laughs> 
I don't know how it works. It just works. Make sure you go into YouTube settings and have like accept membership or accept free gift or whatever on. Yeah, I think you do. I, I think it defaults to that. Maybe. I don't know. Um, you might have to turn it on, though. Good tip for everybody. Yeah. No, I've never gotten it. So. And JJ Slot Play says, this is harsh, but we hate that firecracker machine. <laughs> yeah. That's not harsh at all. They're speaking the truth. Seriously. Um, and be sure to check out JJ Slot Play, of course. They uh, they play the same machines that we love to play at Winston. Oh, yeah. Because they know. They know. Those are the good ones to play. So they Except that Tunes Gold. Well. Yeah, they Jenny do like that. Jenny loves that Tunes Gold. Yeah. loves that one. Maybe so we'll try one that here. one again. From Conan Eric's oh, Adventures. Shows too, yep. And Shows too. That's right. I always forget about shows. You can use that resort credit on shows too. There you go. All right. Let's see. Uh, apparently you want to take this one? I'll give you a hard one. Yeah. So <laughs> what is the best way to get the maximum points on a cruise ship? Uh, not trying to walk away with a profit, but want to make a certain number of points a day. What is the best strategy? Well, Cruise ships, the thing is, is with, with any casino, anytime we're talking about points or comps or anything like that, every single casino is going to be widely different. That's the same with cruise ships too. Um, I don't know the specifics behind what your particular cruise line does uh, for their comp calculations and stuff like that. So that's a really tough one to answer. Um, anytime that you are gambling on a cruise ship though the biggest advice that i can give and this is totally not comp related at all but it is definitely casino related is to watch your budget you know people are trapped on a boat and they just <laughs> feel that they can you know they're like oh i'm gonna hit up the casino go to the casino and they go to the casino way too much and remember that the casino always has the advantage of time so if you're in there too much and i would not a cruise ship is probably not the best place to grind for comps because you are <laughs> right. stuck in the <laughs> you are stuck in the <laughs> yeah, casino. So I would not, I really wouldn't recommend chasing uh, chasing it. But uh, to answer your specific question, it's just really hard to say because every place is so vastly different. Um, whether it's a land based casino or whether it's a cruise ship casino, it's really difficult to say how they calculate comps and how you can maximize it because the answer is going to be different. For every single company. Yeah. Good advice, though. Yeah. Don't chase comps. It's all those, comps come those, with those days play. at sea. At sea is more like at yeah. the casino. At the casino. <laughs> right. That's what they really want, right? Or at uh, the right. jewelry store in uh, Jody's <laughs> case. <laughs> Let's see. Well, I got one here from Marty B here. Okay. Uh, in the past, when I have asked the Players Club at Windstar, they always tell me they have no knowledge regarding comps, that comps and offers are handled by a third party. I have a feeling that third party is like in a cave somewhere, completely separated from reality, because they have zero clue what they're doing on anything, and it makes no sense. It does kind of make more sense that they would have a third party doing it, so they wouldn't have to do anything themselves, but it's just so chaotic and random on how they actually issue out mark will have great offers one week i'll have a bad offer he'll have great offers i'll have a good offer see how this keeps going mark has great offers dave gets screwed i got that's screwed not the whole always month true of march. Yeah, that's not always the true whole month of march i got screwed yeah it's because you went never mind we're not going to get into that <laughs> and we both and we <laughs> both got knocked down to premiere yeah we're not elite anymore well how sad is that bad face we can still well, because they, the it fires every like three months or six yeah. months or from six months. It's every six months. But so, the buffet still works for Premier Line, so we're good. There you That's go. That's the only advantage to having Premier I've seen, or Elite or Premier. Pretty much. I mean, yeah, there's I the mean, small discount you get from the spa, but it's not really worth it. Yeah, well, the Win Winstar's reward system is the most confusing, inconsistent mess I've ever seen. I mean, even all the way down to trying to figure out what kind of free play you get. It, it's so right. complicated. It's like, oh, you had to wait till 8 a.m. and you got to use it before uh, 12 p.m. And if you don't use it between then, then you lose it. And then there's a mystery bonus, but it's only 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And it's only in certain rooms. It's like, come on, guys, just give everybody a blanket free play. <laughs> Go <in> there. Right. <laughs> like, don't put them through a scavenger hunt in that place. Nobody wants to walk that whole thing. <laughs> so, oh, man. We still love it, though. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one here. Okay. From 
moto dense if so if you weren't all mvm mgm fanboys <laughs> where would you take your wife to stay first time in vegas asking for a friend are we mm. fanboys at mgm i mean we I, I we prefer it because it does have one of the best systems in place and we already yeah, have status there yeah. it's hard to get away from that number of properties too that's number big, of properties around the country around the world uh this so it would probably be i so recently just this trip and amanda's gonna like be what i stayed in the cosmo for the first time cosmos nice I, the cosmos room nice. was nice the bed was nice the pillows were nice. everything was awesome about it i would say there would be my choice because it is so centered to the strip it is a very unique property it has a lot of amenities um that'd be my choice the food is outstanding there as well so i don't know if you guys have a different i mean because i just liked cosmo a lot that was didn't like gambling there but still like staying there god it's hard to i i I, I just I would recommend the MGM property, so I can't really. Think I mean, of, which you know, MGM. I mean, because that's be the only one I've stayed anyway. at. I just haven't stayed, so I can't really recommend any others. You know, what about you? I've Bradley? stayed. I, I've I've stayed at a few places, but you know, to be to be fully honest and transparent, MGM is kind of starting to lose its luster for me a little bit. Um, you know, All it's been evident changes. by, you know, there's been a lot of changes with MGM recently, and that's you know, true. like yeah. If, if even if we were to go back and watch videos from six months ago or a year ago, you know, we would talk about how they had amazing comps and all of that. And mm -hmm. really the comps have gone down a lot, like tremendously a lot. Yes. They um, are. so yep. M MGM is really starting to take, take it almost like a nosedive in that sense. Uh, but for me, I love to eat. I absolutely love to eat. And uh, I will say this, New York, New York really impressed me with all of their food. And That's Park MGM, food. you know, Dave was right about Italy. It's very, very impressive. There's a lot of selections. Um, I would always recommend staying in any place where you can do other things and still get a good value out of the trip. And the nice thing about MGM properties is most of them you know they have great selections to do mgm grand has great food as well but new york new york was just absolutely awesome and so was park um i wasn't really a fan of park mgm's room um you heard of no, a red, red room, room. <laughs> a very red, red, red room. Uh, but uh, you know I, I will agree with dave i've stayed at cosmo a few times and cosmo is beautiful especially if you get one of those rooms that has the patio it's phenomenal i, I think if i think awesome. if you're going to take a spouse if you're going to take a spouse there and you want something kind of like a romantic getaway i think cosmo is probably the best just because it's the only hotel on the strip uh, for for the most part, I mean MGM has a couple, but it's the most it's the biggest hotel on the strip that actually has like balconies and patios and like it's just it's overall nicer. Like you get there on a nice day, you yep. can open up all the patio doors and get that breeze coming in. It's you know, so uh, that's what I would I would recommend. Or if you're wanting something a little more uh, intimate of a setting and you're wanting something smaller, or if you hate children, then I would recommend <laughs> staying at. Um, I would re definitely, re yeah. I mean, if you, if that was you right hate, between the eyes, if you, yeah, absolutely. No, if you are, if you are not a fan of having screaming kids around you, then stay at the Cromwell. The Cromwell is right there on the strip. Uh, they do not allow children to stay there, so stay at the Cromwell. And there's, it's only 600 rooms in the entire hotel. It's a very small, it's a micro resort, so to speak. But it's right across the street from Caesar's Palace, so it's dead center of the strip. Um, that's what I would recommend. Those are my recommendations. I have, I have never stayed at the Cromwell. And since it became Cromwell, I've never gambled there because I liked Bill's gambling hall so much. It was such a Cromwell's trashy nice. place. Cromwell, Cromwell is, nice, is beautiful. So uh, if, if, if you haven't, I, I, I used to stay at the Cromwell when I was, um, when all of my tier status and rewards were with Caesars, I would stay at the Cromwell all the time because that was to me the nicest part. Cause you know, you only got like, what like six floors i think like six like six floors you know the elevators are guarded there's no kids anything like mm -hmm. that um it's just a lot more quiet uh, the rooms are very small i will say that the rooms are very small uh but they do a very very good job of what they do and uh, overall cromwell's just a really nice experience to stay at well, there you go hopefully that gives you enough there <laughs> lots of options for sure especially going to vegas
Yeah. And uh, let's see. Nancy B says, Mark and Dave, if I win a jackpot at Windstar, I live in Texas, and I want them to take out taxes. Will they take out both Oklahoma state tax and federal? Yes, they will. And yes, I highly will. recommend you doing that um, because you do not want to be filing an Oklahoma state income tax. Uh, even though you live in Texas, you're still going to have to file. And that's that's not good, right? Just have them take the taxes. Yeah. Unless you just want the tax them out. You know? And unfortunately, WinStar does not separate it. So you can't have no. them just take out federal and, and leave state or vice versa. You're not allowed to do that. It's either all or nothing. So I think it's 24% for federal and 27% with federal and state. Yeah. So it's like an extra 3% for state. It's extra yeah. 3%. Yeah. Yeah. To not have the hassle worth it. Yeah, totally. Let's see. Mm. There's one from Michelle uh, real quick. Okay. Dave, what about the towels at Cosmo? <laughs> oh, towels are great. Uh, ample well, towels. You like my towels? It was the dog towel. It was not the dog towel. It was the dog towel. It was the only <laughs> clean towel. Listen, wow, I could have given you a nice, plush, <laughs> comfy towel. But if it was clean, if but it wouldn't have been clean. So would you have preferred <laughs> that or would you prefer a clean towel with holes in it? Zero star at Mark's <laughs> Resort. <laughs> hey, you like the water pressure. Water pressure is good. Uh, okay. Michelle, towels are great. So this room I was in actually had two full bathrooms in it. Single bedroom, but two full bathrooms, which I thought was neat. But yeah, tons of towels. So you only number one, one in one bathroom and number two in the other. You could, you know, keep one as the twos. <laughs> keep here's the, two the most separate. important. Here's the most important question: Did they have gummy bears in the room? I had to bring my own. <laughs> you know why? Can't go wrong with them. It can't go wrong with MGM gummy bears. Oh my god! I, I ate two bags this on guy, my last man. trip. Brantley was... and gummy bears are like. <laughs> he so just walked... for... he, I he comes up to my room because we're going to do the show. And he comes in, he immediately just goes and takes my gummy bears. <laughs> Doesn't even ask, just takes them. Yeah. So for, for those for those of you that don't know, Mark and I have this thing with the gummy bears. So <laughs> no. anytime we travel to Vegas, I always try to steal the gummy bears out of his room. <laughs> so I have to hide them. Because we'll take <laughs> All them. Right. If you're out there watching this, uh, send Brantley, go on Amazon. And send Brantley like the 20 pound bag of gummy bears. <laughs> well, you got to send them the right ones or you won't eat them. <laughs> oh, gotcha. You got the right ones. <laughs> gummy bear connoisseur. <laughs> All right. Richard Jacobs. The Nomad is closing. Richard, I asked again when on my trip what is and no one knew that? anything about yeah. this. So, yeah, I, I asked uh, MG, Park MGM staff. Yeah. And uh, at the front, both front desks, I went to the Nomad front desk and the park desk. No one knew anything about it. So I do I don't not know, know why what the story my is on that. told me that. Like, why would she say that? Like, right. It doesn't... I don't know. Because I we booked there and she's like, I'm glad you're doing that before it goes away soon or something. I mean, I have the email where she said that. And it's like, yeah. and then, but I'm like that. That's the only source I've heard that from. Everybody else we've talked to is, is oh, we don't know what you're talking about. Even, you know. And I can just... book my trip to, to for G2E. I was just looking at it today. I can book October at the Nomad. So that doesn't mean they wouldn't anything. be offering bookings that far out. <laughs> oh, sure. They, generally, would. they don't want to uh, like have to have people book it and then go back and cancel on them, you know? So usually I'll they stop a, bookings. I'll put you in the point. blue room. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Back to some questions here. Let's see. Uh, this is an interesting one. Robert Martinez says with a bankroll of 1,000 to 2,000, is it better to play in the high limit room or out on the floor is best? Thank you all. Hmm. I don't, you know, this is kind of just a general thing about high limit rooms, guys. Like there's not something special going on in high limit rooms. It's just a different room that has high denomination machines in it generally. And the only reason they do that is because high limit players normally don't like the big excitement and craziness. Okay. The people that play high limit want to be left alone. They want to just sit there and gamble and enjoy their comps and fast drink service and stuff like that. Fast hand pay turnaround, all that kind of stuff. Like that's, that's why high limit rooms exist. It's not because it is the room where you can win in. I mean, you can win anywhere. It's in relation to your bet. That's the most important, right? So um, there's really not a mystique to high limit rooms. Um, it's just where the high, dollar machines are so for a bankroll of one to two thousand i don't really think you should be playing any high limit game 
um, if that's your bankroll. Maybe five dollar machines, maybe ten dollar at max at one credit. But I mean, it, it really doesn't matter what your budget is, in my opinion. Like you should always start slow and steady and kind of build up from there. I think one of the biggest mistakes people get is that they come in with a budget like that and they try to push their luck way too quickly. And it's easy to do that because you're excited. You're going to the casino. You haven't been there in a while. You have all of your bankroll in your pocket. The excitement is there, right? You're at the top of your game. <laughs> and so everybody who enters a casino that hasn't been in there in a while has that same feeling of anxiousness to get down and start playing something. And my recommendation has always been to start low and scratch that itch. And then I think you will, that anxiety will kind of come down a little bit. And then you can decide whether you need to go play higher limits or not. And it could base, be based off of how well you're doing in those lower limits. But don't feel like you have to always start at the top. Like, I, I think that's where a lot of people fall into problems uh, and trouble in the casino is they just, they start too heavy and too fast. And then it's just downhill from there if it doesn't go well. It could go well. You never know. But oftentimes it doesn't. And then that's when all the bad things start to come out, right? Where you start chasing your losses. You start going to the ATM to get more money out and things like that. Because I've only been here for 30 minutes. So I've already lost my ass. Now what am I going to do? You know, that's just not a good situation. We don't want anybody to be in that. So for 1 to 2K, stay out of the high limit room would be my recommendation. And look for those high, like $5 max bets. Uh, Maybe ten dollar max bets and stick stick with that for a little while. That'd be my recommendation. All nice right, Jay, why don't you take some and if you I'll look for some for Brantley too. There's some other good super there. chat here from George. Hello, George. What's everyone's vote for the worst slot machine of all time? I think Regal Riches, but don't tell Vegas <laughs> Matt. I don't think he's played that since he got burned on it. Probably not. Yeah. Uh Regal Riches is pretty bad. It is bad. It's tough. But but the worst game of all time, I mean, that's hard. Um, Diamond Queen. <laughs> that's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Um, like I guess it depends on what you did bad from winnability sake, or is it bad because it's just not an bad enjoyable game, game, you know? Yeah. Bad gameplay. You know, I'm still going Diamond Queen. <laughs> You know, I, I think that I'm going to have to think on a more technical level here and I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to say the worst slot of all time, probably from a math standpoint, from a technical standpoint has got to be pinball gold, the three line pinball gold. Yeah. That one is pretty, That's that bad. one is terrible. That, that one did not do very well. Um, but yeah, that, that would probably be my bet. My my vote for worst slot is pinball gold, not double gold, not the new one, but the right, three right. line. Most people have never yeah. played pinball. Yeah, because it didn't. Have, yeah, it just wasn't it out. It didn't take yeah. off. Yeah, yeah, well at all. Um, somebody actually answered the worst game. I've this is the worst slot I've ever played my entire life, and we actually did a video on it. So cruising with Thomas says, "Have you guys seen the new slot that has a racing wheel? That's a Mario Kart clone, pretty much. It's what? in New York, New York. It is awful." awful i have missed that Apparently yeah it is in the that. corner I seen it. it is in the corner um dave you don't watch our own videos <laughs> no no i i Busted. saw it then oh okay. i missed it in new york oh, okay. new york seeing it because I, I meant to go stop by for it and i missed seeing it i don't believe you don't hate um, what's this george is killing me <laughs> 499 super chat from george don't hate on my diamond queen Line hits are really not bad, and you know bonus is awesome. Yeah. I wouldn't know the bonus is awesome because I've never. Yeah, but you got to get it first, George. Yeah, yeah you got to get it. Getting the bonus, <laughs> and you know That's the bonus the is awesome. No, George, game. I don't know that. I don't know the bonus is awesome. <laughs> I'll take <laughs> your word for point. it. Yeah, <laughs> That's a good point. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea the bonus is awesome. I've heard it's good, but not willing to withstand the. Uh, the torture to try to get it right oh wait, wait. all right cheap slots and cheap gambling the fishing game with the fishing reel <laughs> oh yeah my oh, wow. dad loved that game he, oh, he really loved like, that game yeah with the little fishing rod where you with went like real yeah 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 funny <laughs> let's see 
<laughs> uh, here's one for you, Brantley. Why don't you take this one? Yeah, casual player, low uh, bank roller. Uh, can you recommend the best electronic slots? Um, if you're working with a low bu- a low bank roll, the best electronic slots, and you want to play something new. Um, again, I got to plug the video that just came out yesterday over on Cowboy Slots, which was the best new, uh, the five top five best new slot machines to play. And there's a couple on there that are good for uh, just having fun, entertainment. Mo Mummy is one of them um frankenstein can be very fun uh again it's very entertaining it can be pretty rewarding even at a lower bet level um i really wouldn't recommend the quick hits for anything like that uh but if you're looking for something new i would try out mo mummy or frankenstein if you're looking for something entertaining that you can still do well with a low budget sounds good all right uh, Tazzy and Joe says, "Hey, what was the online slot page that you made? Oh, it's a, it's an app. It's called Cashman. Cashman. Yeah, Cashman. For, you can play which the, we played for like a week. The Reds. Yeah, it's it's one of those annoying ones. It gives you pop up hell every time you get back into it. But and yeah, most sad. Um, Red Ruby two is in there. The five line. Mm-hmm. Mr. Moneybags is in there. Uh, what's the uh?" The frozen one, what's it called again? Polar Polar High Roller. Polar High Rollers in there. Yeah. 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 I've already run out of coins on that stupid game. <laughs> and I'm not buying more coins. I'm definitely not buying more coins. I'll do my other trick. Let's see. Uh, Josh Shot Photo says, is every Denom a different RNG or the same one? You said before that changing Denom is like going to another machine. Are we saying that a different pay table is a different RNG? So, no, it's... Um, I think people uh, generally get confused about what the RNG's purpose is. Um, it, you know, and maybe go watch the video that we posted a couple days ago about how slot machines work because we kind of go into a little bit more detail. But the RNG is just a, a random number generator that is firing off as soon as the machine gets power and it's just running through these numbers. Okay. That it doesn't even know what game is belonging to it yet. Like it is just a cycle of numbers. Okay. But what you're trying to say is that if you do change to a different denomination, could it have different payback percentages? And the answer to that is yes. And generally speaking, the higher denomination, the higher the payback percentage is. Um, and it is like going to a different machine. And this is true on even multi-denomination machines. Okay, so if there's a machine that has 10 cent, 20 cent, dollar, two dollar, if you change those denominations, it's literally like you getting up and walking to another machine that is the same, but with that denomination only. Um, but we got to give you a big caution here. And I, it's a slippery slope with this payback percentage stuff because it's, it's a very long-term event in any kind of short term. And by the way, I'm going to mention what we did. Cause I know you guys are probably, I just now remembered what we did a couple of days ago, but, um, let me finish this thought. So the payback percentage is a very long-term event. And it's not something that you're going to even realize in such a short-term play. So what that means, what I'm translating to you is that, You should play with wherever you're comfortable with budget wise and don't change your bet higher just because you've heard there's some magical big percentage change back to you because you need to increase your bet beyond what you're comfortable with. Um, That is certainly not true. We do not want you to do that. Um, Okay, so let's talk about the impromptu live we did last Friday night. Uh, Just real quick, um, if you were able to join us, cool. If not, um, we don't have the replay available. You just kind of had to be there. And if you're a member, I think you can see it. But anyway, what we did is in the casino here at the ho- at the house, I set up four machines with four different payback percentages, ranging from 85% all the way up to 98%. And we played them for about 40 minutes or so, just playing them nonstop, going through bonus rounds, all that kind of stuff. And then at the end, we wanted to get everybody to try to guess which payback percentage belonged to, to each machine. And we set up a thing to vote so everybody could go on there and vote to see which payback percentage they thought belonged to each machine. Um, I pulled the numbers this morning because we were going to do a giveaway. And the giveaway was a $200 Amazon gift card to anybody who got it right. Nobody got it right. Out of the 54 uh, people that submitted it, nobody got it right. So we'll take that 200 and we'll do it on the next contest. We'll just sweeten the pot with that. So we're not going to just do away with it. But what does that teach you, right? Okay, nobody was able to guess all four of those. And the reason it was difficult to do is because it was like one of the machines paid back 44% during those 40 minutes, 44%, not even close. That one was actually set at the second highest out of all the rest. 
And so the, the point that we were trying to make doing this live is that you can't, you can't tell the difference between a payback percentage in such a short event, such as you sitting down and playing a slot machine. Now, if you're going to play in the long run, like if you're a local to Las Vegas and you go to the casino once a week, twice a week, every night, whatever the case is, then yes, you should probably look at the return to player statistic averages and figure out which casino traditionally averages out better than the other one. If you're local over the period of years of you playing there, you will notice a difference, but it's years. And that's not how most people go to play the casino. And so we don't want you to get caught up in payback percentages because it's not something that you're going to, number one, you have no control over it. Number two, it's not something you're going to notice in, in each individual session of going to a casino and playing a slot machine. We'd rather spend that, you spend that energy on the budget side of it. Am I playing within my means? Am I pushing my risk a little bit too much with the money I'm gambling now? Those are the things you should be focusing on and not the payback percentages of the machines, okay? Because they're just all, especially casinos in the Las Vegas area, they are all within a percent of each other. You know, it's not something that you're ever going to really notice, okay? So anyway, that's that's a long answer to your question, but I did want to get that out. I thought it, I thought at least one person would have got it right. There were five of you that were just one off that you got one just oh, flipped around. So close. So so close. Five of you were very, very close. Uh, but yeah, nobody got it right, right on the nose. Wait, somebody did, but they posted it after I gave the results. So not oh, that was too easy. Yeah. I could time stamp. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So there you go. All right, Dave, why don't you take some? All right, from Marty B. Dave, do you have an estimate when the max button protector will be available for purchase? Soon, Marty. Uh, I am having <laughs> issues with my 3D printer, of my kid's 3D printer right now. Uh, I am working on getting it up and running again. It was working fine. No issues. All of a sudden, levels all off, everything. The, the nozzle scratched the uh, bed even, so I had to order a new bed. Uh, but it'll be up and running probably the end of this month still. It's still my target is to get them up at the end of this month. Uh, most likely it'll just be one color for a while. Um, black or gold. That's what I, the filament I have right now. I'm going to use up those up first. So soon ish. Soon ish. <laughs> and a $5 super chat from 20 fair, 25 years too late. <laughs> Thank you. 25. <laughs> Sounds like the story of my life, right? Just kidding. <laughs> Jody on a dragon link type game is uh, the bonus predetermined or does it matter when you hit the spin button? No, it's not predetermined. Uh, not the progressive bonus, but like the collecting the spin and hold feature uh, that is not predetermined. Every single spin is going to be a completely random number generator stop on all the different reels on there. Um, it's a very long explanation. I'm not going to get into it, but just to answer your question real quick. Uh, no, it is not predetermined. Every time you hit that spin button, it's a new RNG stop. So it has not been decided yet. And fast stopping makes no difference. I see people, no on, especially no, no. on the spin and hold feature, thinking that if you go like really crazy on the button, you can get the orbs to stop right where you want them to. Nope. It worked that one time for that one guy, one place. <laughs> That's right. And it was just a coincidence. And the rest is history, right? <laughs> yeah. But thank you so much for your super chat. You guys have been very generous. So thank you. All right. Oh, this is a good uh, one. This is one for it. all of us here. One, one more jackpot question. Have you ever... Walk into a casino and immediately walk out to the look, lack of good machines, or any other reason. I know yes. I have. I yes. have. I have driven to a casino, and I walked out of it right away. Yep. And it was. It was. It, my reason was because I walked in there. It looked as seedy as can be. The doors opened up and the smoke billowed out. <laughs> like they were smoking so right? much in there. Like right. A whole room of chain smoking people. And I was like, nope. Walked out. I didn't even look inside. I didn't even go inside. That was it. I mean, not worth it. I can't tell you how many times I've done this. So many times. And it's for the initial reason was if they didn't have any top dollars, I was out of there. I would yeah. literally walk the whole floor, look for top dollar. If it wasn't there, I walked out. Gone. <laughs> you know, I used to do that on the Las Vegas Strip all the time. A friend and I would just walk down casino hopping looking for the top dollar machines and if they didn't have it we just walk right out but uh yeah the smoke too is another thing that kills me like if it's really bad yeah i'll just you know just walk right back out so what about you branley i've done it a few times um yeah. usually for me it's you know 
machine selection is one or if it's just dirty dirty and smoky i don't like it but yeah i have or i've there's walked kids. in walked right back yes yeah. <laughs> sorry i know i know i know i'm just joking just joking good question though all right, let's see. If you see one good. Oh, uh, Brantley, why don't you answer this one? Because I'm, I'm yeah, pretty sure so I know the is, answer, but this is a good one for you. Is the gaming commission involved when they uh, remove slot machines from the casinos? Yes, absolutely. So um, it depends on what they're doing with the machines, but yes, 100% they are. The gaming commission is really involved in just about everything. Um, you know, moving machines on the floor, a gaming commission doesn't really get too involved with moving machines. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, but for a machine, it's called a dis. It's called a dispo, is what it is. And if they're removing the machines from the floor, then absolutely the gaming commission is involved on that. Sounds good. All right, Dave, if you got any, go ahead. I got this one right here from M three Mummic three. Uh, why would a casino stop taking out taxes? Can you ask them to take tax out anyway? How is that determined? I've never heard of anyone not to stop taking out taxes. Yeah, I haven't heard of um, that either. But so I can understand if they're super busy and shorthanded, they say we can't do that right now because it does take extra work. But I've never heard of that. I could just understand if that was a reason. Um, but no, I've never heard of them stop taking out taxes if you requested for it. They're happy to do it. It's a couple extra steps for them, but it is easy enough to do. Uh, at WinStar, it's even done on their tablet, and they're, they don't have to do anything. They don't have to write anything down. So I've never heard anyone stop taking taxes, uh, but as you can always ask them to take out taxes, should not be a big deal. Yeah, first I've ever heard of that, too. Yeah, never heard of that. All but right. it's interesting Let's... to hear that someone do that. I mean, yeah. Take my taxes, please. I mean, I don't want them to, but you know, you can't hide from Uncle Sam, <laughs> right? Brantley's getting a get lot of love on that neon sign. Yeah. Oh yeah, my, my neon, my neon cool. light. It's it is pretty cool. I like it. It gets much brighter, but it looks good. Yeah, Ooh, Brantley's cool, door it? idea for you: a nightlight <laughs> version of that. <laughs> oh yeah. Just a plug in, like a plug in nightlight. Yeah, yeah, a little plug in nightlight. Oh, you can. You can go lower. There we go. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's perfect. Now you kind of kind of see it instead of being totally yeah. bright. You can kind of see twenty five. Right yeah, there. There we cool. go. Yeah, yep. that's great. That's perfect. Nightlight version. Uh, we will that. probably have them behind us at some point. Brantley's getting <laughs> hooked on it. <laughs> I, I've I've tried to I've tried to tell Mark and Dave that they got to get one. Yeah, too. He has. I've just been lazy with contacting the dude. So <laughs> we'll get to it. And X says, uh, th th this might be tied into what you actually heard. So recently I won 3,800 at Caesars and they didn't withhold taxes. How soon do I need to pay estimated tax? So uh, this is something a lot of casinos I've, I've heard are starting to do where they just, they just either don't mention it or they just subtly say, you don't want taxes, right? You know, they try to get you not to do that because it's, it's more money for you to gamble with. Right. I think that's probably the major reason. Right. Um, but you got it. it's on you, okay? So if they don't if they don't say anything or they kind of mumble through it, say no, absolutely, I want taxes taken out right now uh, before they come back and and you need to tell them before they bring the money back yeah. because otherwise they got to do more paperwork. It's going to take you longer to get your money, all that kind of stuff. So when they come to uh, clear off your jackpot, tell them I'd like all the taxes taken out, please. Um, and they really if you didn't, if you didn't, uh, you probably most likely you got a W two G form whenever they gave you your hand pay. So you just need to file that with your normal income taxes every single year. Okay. So whenever, if you do turbo tax or something like that, there's a place in there for claiming gambling winnings, W2G forms. That's where you would put that in. So. Don't forget to do my taxes. That's what's on my list. Yeah. Tax day is coming up soon, guys. Don't forget. Don't forget. Yeah. I need an extension on that. I do too. <laughs> Cause I'm still waiting on a 1099. I haven't gotten yet. So, you know, I was actually, uh, I, I will I will say this. I was actually very, very hurt and disappointed, which it sounds like a good thing, but it's really not. My accountant actually called me and said that this year I actually ended the year in the positive. 
Oh wow! Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. It's awful. <laughs> well, well, no, it's 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 a terrible thing for taxes. It is actually, in the right? in the positive because you you want to show a negative. <laughs> That's like, right. Oh crap! <laughs> okay, well, that's going to be fun, right? <laughs> oh yeah, I can't wait to get that bill. That's right. That's right. All right, guys. Well, we could go on for a lot longer, but I think we're going to wrap up the show today. Yep. Um, 450, thank- over 450 people. Yeah, over 450 in here today. Awesome so we really that? do appreciate you guys. Thank you so much, especially all you recent subs. Uh, we want to welcome you to the Gamble Smart channel. And also be sure to check out Cowboy Slots, of course. I'm sure all of you already subscribed over there, but if not, please go check him out. Um, we are starting to show up on his live shows on Sunday, too. So we're just kind of having a big, fun family outing, so to speak, uh, every single week with both channels. So. We certainly do yeah. appreciate everybody here. And uh, as always, uh, any other last minute things that we need to cover, Dave? Website, GambleSmart.net. Oh, yeah, Gamble I put Smart. a secret Net. shirt in there that Dave has not seen yet. So I have you better seen it, go get it before Dave sees it. I already saw it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you did? You got to be faster than that. <laughs> Dang. Well, you didn't take it down, so. You know how much time I spend in the merch store every day because I'm like <laughs> looking for You're everything. Like, wait, what like, is this? <laughs> I'm now I'm in there. I'm analyzing like how often people look at it, all this stuff. I'm like all that. Remember our merch store, gamblespart.net. Yeah, and remember that Las Vegas Advisor uh, book is also at yep. the link. They are posting it again. Gsts.live forward slash book. There you go. All right. Uh, Brantley, thank you so much as always. Yeah, and of course. Thank you for having Brantley. me. And see you on Sunday. And uh, remember and... the sun, the Sunday show over on the yep. Cowboy Slot channel. Too, yeah, we'll so, be there. We'll uh, be there on yeah, Sunday. Absolutely. Excellent. All right, guys. Take care. We'll see you later. Right, Have a good Gamble smart. Good night, guys. Gamble safe. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs>